is a tool this tool is basically something which is launching itself upon what we call self management <laughs> human resource management is fundamentally associated with managing the self first you cannot be motivator without motivating yourself you cannot become a good manager without managing yourself you cannot become a good leader without practicing certain value systems which you advocate to your followers so this understanding is the key to soc that means when we talk about soc in hrm it talks about self management or a personal model think of the self before anything am i doing what i expect from others first do then preach first give then take move on to slide number 7 slide number 7 we are talking about making a soc analysis how do we make a soc analysis what exactly are the factors that go into the soc analysis that we make the soc analysis is basically concerned with strengths and weaknesses as well as the opportunities and threats the first set which are internal and the second set which are basically external now again we move on to the entire process how this is done slide number 8 and here we are looking at we are starting with the s the whole process starts with s w o and c now we start with s which are the strengths what are my strengths how do we look at our strengths what exactly are our strengths now I, as i said earlier i am putting this from an individual's perspective where that individual he or she things in terms of the strengths that they have now strengths are that which is bestowed upon me like every other being every person in this world is born with some strengths they might have some weaknesses but they all have some strength and these strengths could be basically genetical or naturally present or much of them could have been things which are acquired consistently with my effort so there are some people who we say they have got inborn talents with them but a large set of your capabilities competencies and strengths could be this which you have those which you have acquired over a period of time with your consistent efforts so everybody does have them with some kind of a variation it will vary in terms of type in terms of the nature and in terms of the grade at which it comes but every person have their own strengths what is important is understanding those strengths there could be large number of people who themselves or there could be uh, people uh, students or even teachers or different uh, men among us who themselves do not know what are their basic strengths or what are their basic weaknesses those strengths would be present in them which they are not capable to recognize or identify or there could be certain weaknesses which they themselves might not be aware of so we are talking about an inventory on this if we need an inventory we need to have a realization and a recognition for this let us see how we can perhaps uh, count them inventory with this process we move on to slide number 9 now in slide number 9 again i am looking at my strengths they are saying the strengths i'm just saying some of them could be this is just an example i'm talking about my talents people can sing you can dance you can draw you can design you can do artwork you can do literary work you also have good knowledge my knowledge my skills it could be my strengths Again, my level of uh, confidence that i have the confidence with which i am working that could be my strength my communication capabilities could be my strength when i continue with slide number 10 in slide number 10 again i find my ability to comprehend comprehension skills it could be my strength my analytical capabilities it could be my strength my reading proficiency it could be my strength so also my listening skills now all of these strengths if you look at these strengths uh, in isolation you see that when i am very focused on those strengths and i look outside it has an associated opportunity which i can take advantage of which i can build on which i can uh, what do you call multiply and develop but i need to know that i do possess them i need to activate them which the activate those strengths which are inherently present in me 
continuing with my strengths in slide number 11 i have my strengths in the form of ability to adapt interpersonal skills dealing with others i have my personality factors i have my character uh, traits my ability to resolve issues and my ability to pro solve problems so all these are basic strengths it goes on and on i should carefully introspect over these i should carefully ponder over the same identify the same and i have to list them i have to count them and list them this is my inventory now the issue comes how do i know whether these are there in me say for that matter a singer like eshudas himself has said that there could be good singers in the world who can sing far better than me but they might not have sang a song they might not have received an opportunity to involve to expose then how do they know that their strength is there in them fundamentally we realize our strength through involving through exposing ourselves or in other words taking advantage of the here and there small opportunities that come when we involve when we communicate when we listen when we comprehend when we put ourselves into different organizational managerial skill based exposures we understand that i am basically good at something or love something or i have a passion for something and there are certain things over which i am not very strong so i have now with me a good inventory of all my strengths of all that is possible from my side which i believe i am good at and i have taken all efforts to list them count them and prepare an inventory of the same now we move on to slide number 12 where we look at weaknesses what are my weaknesses what do we actually call as weaknesses generally when people are asked about weaknesses they say specifically talking about others weaknesses uh, would imply uh, certain things which are in the form of habits say for example smoking is his weakness gossiping is his weakness finding fault with others is his weakness alcoholism is a weakness drug addiction is a weakness maybe these are manifested habits of inherent weaknesses but true weakness or in fact what we call as weakness is the lack of the same strengths which are there in us our inability to activate utilize and expose ourselves on the basis of the inherent strengths that you have when you don't do that when you stay away from that when you act as an obstacle in the true activation of your strengths there comes weaknesses in its place that is why it is said an idle mind is the devil's workshop we might have heard about great actors great, great <laughs> singers great novelists who at a stage in their life have stopped writing stopped acting stopped drawing they withdraw and when they withdraw when they keep themselves away from utilizing the potential that they have the capability that they have the competence that they have the skill that they have when they withdraw from that instant in, instantaneously in its place in that space comes in certain habits certain mannerisms which will turn out to be a weakness and at times it has also re resulted in what we call uh, suicides and breakaways and all great people who are indeed talented have done that there are a number of examples uh, before us so why this is happening because you make yourself idle and when you have that skill in you you are not activating it using it you are not uh, making it robust the fact is that it will get explicit in the form of certain habits or it will be the weaknesses that you have so what we need to look into there could be several things that happen in that play i i don't have anything to do so i gossip or i just waste my time or i indulge in certain things uh, which i believe is certain time fillers or gaps fillers for me those could be my weaknesses now there could be n number of such weaknesses you list them also so now we have an inventory of strengths and an inventory of weaknesses you know your strengths which you denote as plus points you know your weaknesses which you denote as minus points and we move on to the next slide slide number 13 
where we are looking at the values what are those values how do you see those values i have just taken an example where you have a person has got 10 strengths i have identified or i could identify 10 strengths so you have plus 10 identify 10 weaknesses or 10 uh, sorry 12 weaknesses those are the things which happened in my life because i could not activate my strengths or use my strengths to the fullest possible potential so i have plus 10 strengths minus 12 weaknesses the net result is obviously minus 2 now where do i address we have to address our strengths primarily we have to focus on our strengths primarily we have to come back to our strengths we have to again recognize realize review and look at the strengths forget about what are the things which are standing as obstacles or hindrances try to overcome the same by looking at what you are good at what you can do rather than what you cannot do so you add at least one strength when you add one strength to the existing inventory of strengths that you have the obvious result is that plus 10 would become plus 11 you have added one but when you do this you are taking away the space that you have given for your weaknesses or you can do this only by surrendering or giving up one of your weaknesses so your weaknesses which were minus 11 will now turn out to be sorry your weaknesses which were minus 12 you have given up one it becomes minus 11 so the result is plus 11 minus 11 so you are at zero or you are at square what does this mean the net result that you have gained earlier you were at minus 2 now you are at zero so the net result is plus 2 what i am trying to bring across is the synergizing effect that your activation through strength does have you are just looking at your strength you are just adding one strength but you are getting a benefit of two as a result of this as a result happens is you are improvising on your own self you go on and on with this and your change is slow but the change is sure what we are trying to build upon is a slow movement a slow addition through recognition of your strengths and that addition is strengthening yourself and bringing yourself closer to attaining the best possible that you can take out from the opportunities that exist outside the change is slow but sure small and slow but sure now we move on to the 14th slide that we have which is basically summing up of the strengths and weaknesses here we discuss what do we know imagine what happens if you or me we go to a common place let it be a park or a junction or when you are in a in a theater or in a restaurant just try to look at what people converse upon what is their topic of discussion generally something that we find interestingly happening is that people go on talking about what other people should do what others should do now we have the uh, covid going on right now the covid 19 issue going on right now people discuss what trump should have done what who should have done what the indian prime minister should have done what the chief minister should have done if you are in an organization or an institution you talk about what the 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 chief executive of that institution should have done what the police should have done uh, what the religious group should have done so when you very closely watch this you find that people generally know what others should do everybody talk very precisely very exactly about what others should do but the most important thing is know what you can do and what can happen out of what you can do so exactly you have to start from you so instead of because we do not always have control over, over what others can do what we have exact control over is what you can do and we have to precisely start from that point what i can do what we can do and it is from that i that self that you start and this is more possible when we have a precise understanding of our strengths and our weaknesses we move to slide number uh, 15 now after having taken count of your strengths and weaknesses 
our inside is now more clear to us. We have a better picture, a better understanding, a more, uh, what do you call, uh, a, a comprehensible kind of picture on our own self. Maybe still there could be certain things which are latent or certain things which are not quite evident or obvious, but we have an understanding about ourselves. Now we look outside because SWOT and SWOT is basically an inside out approach. Knowing yourself, you look. Now, when you look out, you look, you see an environment. There, there is a physical environment, there is a social environment, there is a cultural environment, there is a natural environment. Lots and lots of things happening outside on each of these dimensions. That is exactly your environment, which always is not within your control, which always is not static. It keeps changing, it is fast changing, but an understanding of that, how it is moving, not to force a change there, but to force a change within so as to match mm -hmm. with the environment outside. That is what is uh, looked into. Let us move to the next slide, the slide number 16. Now, when you look at the environment, you will see that it is full of opportunities. It is full of opportunities, but it is packed with challenges. You cannot have a changing, fast changing environment just giving you opportunities. It obviously comes with challenges, with problems, which perhaps traditionally we call as threats. Now, the world will change. It will keep changing. You cannot stop it. We are just uh, going to look at what could be the possible. The technology changes happen, products, services, lots and lots of things keep changing. You cannot stop it from changing. It will change. But what we can do is to look at what you basically can do with your own self. Mm -hmm. Number 17, look at the change. New technology is coming up very fast. We are talking about human to machine, the transition that is going to take place. Uh, the transition that is going to uh, take place is something which is about to happen very swift. You see certain things happening in terms of artificial intelligence. You see certain things happening in terms of robotics, certain things happening in terms of machine learning, new systems coming up. Lots and lots of new systems will be coming up. You can see lots of things coming up in new products and services that are taking place. You see an emerging cultural change that is happening. Uh, you can see lots of things happening in the form of governance that is taking place and also the legal environment keeps changing. The natural environment also keeps changing. We see in between floods come, the virus attack comes. So all these things are changes which happen in the environment, which uh, we need to understand, which we need to observe, which we need to be receptive to, not to force a change, but to understand what possibly I can do to take advantage of the same. Now let us go to uh, slide number 18. Here, we were earlier looking at a macro environment level changes, physical, natural, based on the environment and all. Mm -hmm. At the micro level also, your environment is changing. What are those changes? Some of the changes are the size of the family is coming down. Earlier, we used to have big joint families. Now you have family with three or four members. The resources that can be shared per member in a family obviously goes up. You have one or two people earning and three or four members. Again, there is a tendency to have lesser amount of sharing within the family because you have resources, less number of people, and you enjoy that. Where you where have a big family, a joint family with a large number of members, you cannot do anything without sharing. So here there is a lesser potential or possibility for sharing. There is a more concern for self. Each people is more concerned about self. My family, my wife, my husband, my children. And the child is also more concerned about that child. There is more of protection. You give everything that is necessary for your children. You give everything that they need. Uh, they need good education. They need good clothes. They need good food. So you're very concerned and you make them very protected. And obviously, as an outcome of these factors, there comes great expectations, which is obviously associated with great risk. We have spent so much of money on them. 
we have given them the best possible education we have given them the best possible uh, food care and all uh, health and all support so we are expecting much from them and when those expectations don't come we feel terribly bad and there is a risk on that so this is a kind of micro level uh, the immediate environment in which your the, the people operate when they when it comes to a family setting and the changes that happen in the macro level environment is uh, those which come in that form now it is at this uh, level that we actually look at uh, the the inventory of strengths and weaknesses that an individual uh, basically has with them now coming on to slide number 19 uh, where do i focus this is again uh, retreat or coming back to what we discussed earlier now we saw an environment which is fast changing based on technology based on the changes in the economy based on changes in political factors social factors and even the natural environment it is fast changing and we said it is uncontrollable at times it is even beyond your imagination we could not have imagined a class like this 30 years back we could not imagine uh, 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 certain things which happen in the form of artificial intelligence and robotics today we could not imagine of this maybe 15 years 20 years back so it is uncontrollable and these are fast changing what is controllable is your strengths and weaknesses and how we can how the, the extent to which you exercise good control over the same is the degree of success that you can attain in making yourself strong in an environment which is a uh, fast changing now we move on to slide number 20. now what is the end result what are we trying to infer from this change yourself change yourself change yourself does not mean that changing uh, your basic value system or changing your food habits or your dressing habits it is talking about making yourself fit making yourself competent to encounter the changing world the world will change you cannot stop it from changing you have to make yourself competent in order to deal with those changes which are happening outside and that is what organizations started doing when they looked at swat initially subsequently this went into as a philosophy uh, for institutions as a philosophy uh, for even uh, small health self-help groups and micro enterprises the msme segment they all started looking at it in terms of how we reorient ourselves how you have a strategic how you take a strategic location in terms of something that is happening outside i cannot directly prevent it from happening i must look at how we are going to deal with the same let us move on to the slide 21. now this slide number 21 it talks about a beautiful change it talks about a prayer a prayer that we need to uh, make the prayer is uh, very simple god grant me the courage to change the things i can serenity to accept the things i cannot and the wisdom to know the difference so there are three things here which are very important one is courage number two is acceptance and the three, number three is wisdom courage for what courage to change the things i can Normally, people like me and we all complained about things happening outside but do we always manifest or exhibit the courage which is required to change it we talk about social evils we talk about responsible citizens we talk about civic sense on the road say for instance uh, when you are on the road waiting for a bus in a bus uh, bus stand you show your hands when a bus comes the bus does not stop you feel very bad you complain against the transport you complain against the transport system you find uh, issues with those who administer you have a lot of problems with you suppose when you're inside the bus sitting comfortably in a seat and you see the bus driver riding along the road and 
he comes across a, a bus stop where you see somebody outside showing his or her hand to get into the bus the bus does not stop do you react so uh, the first part deals with this courage have you shown that courage as a consumer have you shown that courage as a uh, as a citizen have you shown that courage as a, a layman so where we can bring in a change where we are supposed to respond where we are supposed to react if we do not do that the courage that we are showing is very very less so grant me the courage to change the things i can second important thing is serenity to accept accept the things which i cannot change as i said earlier tech i do i might not like many of the changes that are happening outside i'm not comfortable with uh, online teaching i still remember uh, way back in early early uh, late 70s early 80s when i was a student there was a strike against computerization now a uh, lot of people said we join service not with good computer knowledge so we are not going to accept this computerization process because it's going to kill the number of jobs which are available opportunities will get lost but there were some prudent employees who understood that computerization and computerized operations are bound to stay they were the first people who went into learning and they were the first people to grab opportunities for in the form of promotions so we let us understand that whether you like it or not certain changes that are going to happen in terms of technology in terms of changes that are happening in your uh, surroundings in your social systems in the legal compulsions as far as governance are concerned it is bound to happen and we need to accept them we need to have the serenity the clarity to accept the same and above all the third important factor is the wisdom to know the difference the wisdom to know the difference between those things which i can change through a courageous intervention that i can manifest and those things which i cannot change which i need to accept now what is happening generally is that where through your involvement where through our interface where through perhaps our response a change could have been made we remain silent that means we lack the courage to change things which we can and we go on lamenting over things which we cannot change or we lack the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change or in other words fundamentally what is at times at least lacking is the wisdom to know the difference between the above two factors that is the factors where i have courage to change where i need to have courage to change and the factors where i need to accept so that this prayer is something which must go deep into us and with my strength with my weaknesses crystal clear to me this prayer kept along with it now i know what to accept i have the wisdom to consistently enhance upon my strengths and then i see opportunities outside because i know that everything is not a uh, end to something every problem is not something which is going to persist as a problem always there is going to be a turn in it there is going to be some light at the end of the tunnel and i take advantage of that using my strengths which i have inside me we go on to slide number 22 now the swak approach what is swak looking at we accept the things what we are talking about accept the things i cannot change and change yourself now i have accepted certain things i am i am quite clear what i can change what i cannot change and when i understand that there are certain things i which i cannot change then what is possible is change yourself so as so that you can adapt to the changing environment or the changing outside where what do you do over there you have to look at change in your competencies my competencies i have to look at the change in my skill sets earlier what i had now what i am doing that's what i said 30 years back when i started teaching i could have never imagined that i would be engaging an online class i would be having students outside the institution to which i am attached i would be breaking open the limitations of time and space 
So I was under the impression that I would be appointed in a particular institution. Students will come and I'll sit before them, chalk and talk. So things have changed. So accordingly, your competencies, your skill sets have to change. When I did my masters, we never had anything called computerized accounting. We never had most of the capital market operations which were online. We never had anything like a DMAT account. But today, for the last 10 years, 15 years, we have been teaching all these things. This is through consistent efforts to build upon your skill sets. I could have argued contrary to this, saying that when I was appointed mm -hmm. as a faculty, I never told that I knew computerized accounting. Mm -hmm. I have never put a qualification based on mm -hmm. online capital market operations. And so I'm not going to teach this. You have to change. You should have asked this as a qualification. If this, is, or, uh, if this was my approach, obviously I would be out from the profession. So what can you do? You can change yourself. You can change. You have to look at your competencies, your skill sets, the way you think that has to change. Keeping my basic value systems intact enhance your strengths. So when you say change, we are very fast changing perhaps I, I i go to some other place or i enter into a new organization or i visit a new country there i might uh, it is very easy for uh, for me to change my eating habits for me uh, a vegetarian to become a non-vegetarian or to take a new food or to try something or to have a new dress code or a dress habit or to blend with them this is not the change that we are talking about keeping my basic value systems intact i enhance my strength so i have my culture i have my value system i have my belief and tradition i continue with the same and i enhance my strength learning from the environment to which i am exposed we move to slide number 23 what are the opportunities that are there outside again keeping my basic value systems intact i correct my weaknesses so essentially Keeping my basic value system intact, I'm addressing my strengths through enhancement. Am I addressing my weaknesses through corrections? That is what I can do. Or in fact, this is the only thing that I can do. This is where I have control. So where I have control, where there is something that I can do, why should I consistently go on talking about things which I cannot do? Things which I cannot change things which others should do and not looking at your own personal self not in fact be lamenting over things over which you have absolutely uh, no control you have to keep looking at things over which you have your authority to slide number 24 now this is what happens you have your strengths when you consistently add on to that the last slide we were looking at 10 plus 1, 10 plus 1, 10 plus it becomes 11, 11 becomes 12, 13. Slowly, one by one, you take stock, you move cautiously up and up. What you see outside is opportunities. It is not just opportunities, it could be the strength to face challenges. We don't, uh, we, we would not like to wish a person a problem free world. That is not going to happen. That is not a reality. What we are looking for is the ability to encounter, deal, manage those challenges. So when you enhance your strengths consistently and then you keep looking outside, always what I see is there is some possibility. There are certain things which are ripe. There are certain things which would turn out to be ripe and subsequently you can reap. And you are in a position to deal with the challenges we move on to slide number 25 again in the SOC outcomes you are correcting your weaknesses correcting your weaknesses by understanding that what are the factors which are making you idle what are the obstacles which are hindering the free growth or free use of your potential and you go on making small small corrections in the same again you are reducing it Minus 12 becomes minus 11, minus 10, minus 9. You are now competent enough to face challenges. You are competent enough 
to find opportunities outside and that is going to strengthen you so at this stage again we are looking at addressal so the two dimensions on which we work is going vertically up with your strengths step by step slowly coming down on your weaknesses step step by step and then outside you will see opportunities and challenges you see that certain things are happening where you you can take advantage of it because you have reoriented yourself you have corrected yourself you have redeployed yourself you have reviewed yourself that is what happens as far as the swac outcomes are concerned now we move on to uh, slide number 20 as i as we were discussing earlier when we talk about human resource management we talk about a lot of things in terms of uh, motivation counseling mentoring leadership training now the whole idea as i said earlier starts from the self because good leadership starts from a good leader good motivation starts from a good self motivator so self motivation is basically understanding human needs it's not just understanding my needs understanding the needs of all those who are around you understanding the entire dimensions of needs that are there around you and after looking at that what do you do you look at certain things which can very easily be done but often ignored when it comes to the context in which we operate and those mm -hmm. things are first respect respect starts from self respect i first respect myself after having understood what are the strengths and weaknesses in me then i respect others same with recognize i recognize what i am i recognize the good work that i have done and i recognize the good work in others again i listen to myself and i listen to others i listen to what my conscience is telling me and i again listen to people outside encourage i need to encourage action outcomes in me and i need to encourage those who are outside this all comes at no cost and this is basically something which can happen when a good swock has been undertaken shall we move to the next slide number 26 we proceed so we move to sorry 27 the next slide is to number 27 uh teamwork now here this is the the final part of swock is talking about certain things which sounds to be a bit uh, complex which needs a what you call a good understanding of the relatedness that it brings everyone is part of one which means in the world in which we live always there is a totality there is something which stands as holistic it is a, a, a set of the entire mankind not just mankind animals your forest your plant wealth the flora the fauna all the elements in nature that is a totality and we are all part of that totality no one is isolated detached or a separate element over there and we can grow only with this linkage with the totality it can be either you can only grow with your family with the organization with the society with the nation or with the world at large i am not just an entity where i can say that i will go whatever way i am i want i am not bothered about what is happening in my organization what is happening in the society what is happening in my state or what is happening in my nation i am more concerned about myself let things there go wrong or right i am only bothered about myself that can happen when we have not taken stock of the external environment in its right perspective now how do i work and perform if you have made an understanding that i am not an isolated element but i am a part of a totality then i work and i perform with mutual faith because i am in harmony with that totality i have synchronized myself with that totality and i work with mutual faith i work with mutual trust and i have with me certain elements which are meant for my common good 
and which deals with certain things which are the common goals so common goals common goods common good mutual feel would be the leading factors which we tend to understand and that understanding comes from understanding of the environment in its right perspective we move on to slide number 28 so, uh, what are the resolutions that we can make uh, the resolutions one the mindset change and that mindset change is again in the self first our ability to accept change our ability to encourage group efforts then again comes our ability to create a very conducive work culture the work culture where there is mutual recognition mutual faith where we where we recognize ourselves and where we know the environment around us and where we know how these elements are closely blended together again we look at how you value human efforts how human resources turn out to be the most precious of all resources because all other resources are resources which are created by human beings and these human beings if they are strong they have the competency they have the capability then many things can be uh, created over them again the inner urge is it basically comes from being positive encouraging positive thinking being surrounded by people who think positively and when that positivity with a accurate assessment of your potential is there creativity will spring out creativity will spring out and your uh, competencies will spontaneously emerge when that happens you are a stronger self with a great concern for all it's not just sufficient that you become a stronger self because ultimately what happens is existence or the lasting presence of that totality for that you need to have a great concern for all so you have to be a strong self with a great concern for all similarly your inner urge you have to acquire all that sharpens your skills and competencies as demanded from time to time the demanding environment the, the what the environment demands will change so you have to sharpen yourself to meet that that again will result in making yourself a strong personality a strong self with a great concern for all now again when we look at the world it is filled with opportunities as we said but it will be having its own problems and those are the ones those problems those challenges are the ones which have made us learn and when they make us learn we have a very strong understanding that we are still strong we are but strong we move to uh, the slide number 32 in slide number 32 we look at certain golden principles the golden principles are those principles which are talking about that which is creating in us an inner strength it is almost a culmination of what we discussed earlier no man can grow as an island considering i am more bothered about myself or himself or herself alone we have to recognize the society we have to look at what is happening in there in terms of poverty illiteracy exploitation because my growth in that environment also has got something to do with these pockets which are there in the society when all this exists how can i alone march ahead learn to share learn to transmit the learning this is an inner strength so also number 33 you have to respect nature live in harmony with every element in nature think for the generations to come because we when we think about water when we think about uh, oxygen when we think about uh, uh, fresh air we are under the belief that okay one or two generations this is we are going to be over but we have to think of generations to come otherwise maybe your generation itself will suffer this is again an inner strength now we move to slide 34 small is beautiful so we have to look at models which self corrections model or the self the swock model talks about a small model where small things count your values your ethics how you show concern for others these are the small things which happen around you and that is an inner strength how i show my concern to the day to day small daily interventions where i can do certain things so try to deal with that and develop an inner strength based on that 
Time to fly, uh, slide number 35, the strategy. I've just talked about one possible strategy which we uh, get from the literature. This strategy is basically called crawl, stand, walk, run. Now here, we are looking at interventions in the case of a human life where you have a child who is born, the child will crawl, then it will sit, stand, walk and run. But the conclusion is this, in any phase of my life, when I crawl, be positive, one day you can run. But again, when you run, be realistic, never be over jubilant, be with concern for those who crawl. So one day when you crawl, you will stand and there will be a day where you run. Even when you run, keep in mind that there are some people who are crawling and they also need attention. So search for that latent values in you, be peaceful and silent for introspection, but activate your inner strengths. When you do that, you will see you always have a wonderful world ahead of you. Thank you so much. Now we'll uh, take up the questions that you have. Uh, please raise your questions one by one. First question is, how to explore our weakness? Is scientific jumper a strength or weakness? As I said in my presentation, uh, weaknesses are generally put across as manifestation in the form of certain habits that you see. So if you believe that you are idling out, if you believe that you are not doing the best which you could do based on a, a skill set or an identified set of strengths, that means we are moving into a, the, the weaker side or the region where you can project yourself to be weak. So that is one area where you identify uh, your weaknesses. Because what I'm supposed to do, I gave you an example. I'm a good, uh, I can draw, I can read, I can listen. I can interact with others, but I know, know that I know that I can do it, but I'm not doing it and I'm doing something else. What I'm doing at that point of time, how am I filling my space will turn out to be my weaknesses. This is how you ident identify it. The second part is scientific temper. Scientific temper is definitely not a weakness. How can it be a weakness? It cannot be a weakness. But then uh, when you put something as scientific temper, which is not in fact scientific temper, you can identify that as a weakness. Uh, at the question, uh, how do we feel this approach is when we try to address a group of students who believe that I am okay, but you are not okay? How do you use this approach when, when a group of students believe that, okay, that is again a management philosophy which talks about I am okay, uh, you are not okay. This, uh, what we are talking about is a self model. So we have to convey this model to your student, telling them that they need to have an inner realization of where they are okay and where they are not okay. When that inner realization is, what do you call, ingrained into them, obviously they are not going to come up with a situation with I am okay, you are not okay. If you find a person who is saying that I am okay, you are not okay, it is a clear indication of the fact that that person has not done, as I said in the last part of my presentation, inner strengths, the golden principles of inner strengths. <laughs> Even when I'm running, I'm, I'm having some concern for those who are crawling. And even when I'm crawling, I understand that there will be something in me where I run. So if I am putting myself in a position, if my students or whoever it is, considers themselves that I am always okay and others are not okay, it means that they have not made a good assessment of their self. So how can that SOC be used? You have not used the SOC well. If you have done the SOC well, you will know that there are certain things good in me. There are certain things good in others. There are certain strengths in me. There are strengths in others. It could be in varied forms. Even the people who have been punished for different things have their own strengths. So the activation of that strengths will tell that there are certain things in which I'm okay. There are certain things which are there as strengths in them. So if I'm finding fault with others, I'm okay, you are not okay. That means your SOC process has not given you an inner realization of respecting, showing concern for the other side. Uh, uh, at the question, sir, uh, inner urge, how is it influencing the adverse consequences and environments? Inner urge, okay. Uh, our, when we talk about inner urge, inner urge comes, in, I was putting inner urge in the backdrop of the SWOC process. Inner urge for me to know what are my strengths and my weaknesses. Now, when I put myself with an urge to know my strengths and weaknesses, 
I understand. I try to involve. I try to expose. I try to seek feedback, and I try to understand what are the factors in which I am good, or what are the factors in which I am not that good. Now that inner urge for me to better myself is going to create in me a sense of correction, and when I do that correction in me, or when I make that correction in me, then I find that there are certain things which are in waiting for me. in the external environment those are the opportunities that i take advantage of so by inner urge that is what i meant it is not my feelings it is not a dogmatic thought or an intuitive thinking where i uh, where by i jump into something it is my inner realization that i am good at certain things i can do certain things i have the strength to do, do certain things and accordingly i have certain things which i have to uh, what do you call uh, remove or discard from me in order to attain those levels with that in inner urge this in urge you will definitely see that there are certain things which i can take advantage from the en environment which is outside thank you sir so one last question uh, how can a manager perform the swot analysis and if find if he is finding some challenges uh, how can it affect work and how can he inspire his team to achieve more okay uh now when you're talking about this sort because the question is how a manager can use a sort to deal with challenges so i think what they are trying to ask is how can a manager perform a sort for the organization or is it for the manager himself now as i said in this presentation we are talking about an individual looking at a sort for the self no i think he is talking about his team sir so he is talking about the team so when he is talking about the team that they are doing it they are keeping the challenges which the organization is facing in perspective suppose i am in an organization organization is facing the threat in terms of a decline in orders or threat in terms of technology bringing in a new process through which i am finding it difficult for me to survive now i have to reorient my team to see that what we can do to take advantage of this situation should we go for an alternate technology or should we uh, look for certain other processes or should we make uh, take advantage of certain diversified processes into which we can or even perhaps should we move from this sector to some other sector so the team the team i am keeping my team together in order to synergize their competencies and see what are the factors that they can indulge in to take advantage of the challenges that they face so the team would be facing certain challenges when they stand as a, a group together and when they stand as a group together the challenges that they are facing is that they are not able to deal with the pressure that is coming from outside those challenges can be dealt by only bringing the team together so it is it is something where you are dealing with the challenges for the in an organization perspective with a team goal and a team's common good when you say a team team itself implies that there is something which the team stands for they have a common goal they have a common purpose only then it is called a team so when they stand for that common goal and they see that certain things are being uh, standing out as challenges for them they have the manager there has to see how they can look at what is within their control and how they can reorient themselves it could involve uh, certain strategies in in terms of the changes that they need to make in the perspective in which they are operating okay so one more question yeah uh, how do we make use of manifestation effectively so as to ensure law of attraction occurs in our lives by igniting the power of my subconscious okay this is uh, you have a conscious and subconscious mind that is prevailing you and how can you take advantage of this that is that depends upon what comes into your conscious and your con uh, subconscious levels now uh, when certain things comes into your subconscious level and subsequently goes down into your conscious level you have to think of what is its impact it, certain things will have an impact on the certain things will have an impact on others now i have to look at the consequences in terms of how it impacts its impact could be positive it, it its impact could be negative its impact could be positive to the self but at times it might be negative to others that's why i said in all throughout when i'm talking about the inner urge and inner strength you cannot directly take something which is only going to look at your benefit and work at the cost of others because in the long run it will backfire 
so your mind or your from your inner mind what is actually coming out in terms of impact what is going to be its impact what is is that impact that you are talking about supported with a value system if it is supported with a value system if it is supported with an ethical base and it is positive then it is something which i have to uh, what you call put uh, pull and see that it is implemented contrary to that if it is something with the, where i am saying that impact is going to be on the other side of it then i will have to withdraw from it because so that is not something which is uh, as i said i'm not going to i'm not growing with the organization i'm not growing with the society i'm not i'm not integrated i'm i'm like a stand alone and that stand a stand alone definitely will have a negative impact uh, uh, how is the soc analysis effective in finding a strategy to move on for the company on this changing world uh, com- uh, for the company's perspective it is entirely different because as i said earlier i am not talking about a company's perspective here company's perspective can be discussed only when you have when you have taken stock of the entire data and information set of that particular company which is based on the industry in which they act uh, the sector to which they belong uh, the strategic growth which they can achieve it is based on a host of other factors so we have not taken industry perspective here so uh, without looking at the full industry based uh, information i cannot directly put across a sock for that particular uh, a firm or an industry as such okay sir i think that's with the question sir so uh, thank you sir for the wonderful session i think uh, i wish you that this very most informative session and thank you sir yeah. thank you very much thank you very much and i thank all the students and asap for their support thank you so much